Welcome Crypto Mastery. We're on week number 41 of 2022. I'm Susie, also known as Crypto Girl, and we've got Joe on the line for questions and answers that created the amazing Crypto Mastery Indicators. So today we're going to make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. We'll look at the news, the overall market, some hot movers in the basket, indicators, and most importantly, questions and answers. So Google decided to accept Bitcoin and crypto payments for its iCloud services. Now, Google customers will be able to pay for the company's cloud-based services with Bitcoin and Ethereum. This will be facilitated by Coinbase Commerce. And on Coinbase Commerce, they have up to 10 crypto coins that can be used to be able to pay for the Google iCloud. I did want you guys to know today that the one important part of this is that Google's iCloud venture already contributes 9% of the parent company Alphabet's revenue. This collaboration with Coinbase is sure to drive in more customers. So the question is, how much is that 9%? And this could be a very huge, amazing move for crypto advocates because more money will be coming in and out with bitcoin thus the market cap hopefully will change and we'll see that in a minute so here's what happened to coinbase coinbase shares fluctuated at the open before trading down following google partnership actually fluctuated about four dollars shares in coinbase were trading at 65.50 shortly after the open on tuesday the stock had shot up in pre-market trading before surrendering most of those gains after the open. Google announced plans to partnership with the crypto exchange earlier in the day. The move comes shortly after Coinbase and Google revealed plans for a strategic partnership, allowing select Google Cloud customers to pay services using crypto starting from early 2023. In turn, Coinbase plans to use Google Cloud to process blockchain data in Google's fiber optic network to improve its global research. So that is a very big move, and it's, in my opinion, very good for crypto. So we'll see how much that is going to impact the overall market cap of crypto. Now, the other thing, it's still Google we're talking about, all right? Google is now showing Ethereum wallet balances by Tim Copeland today on the block.co. When you search for an Ethereum address on Google, the search engine now shows the wallet's Ethereum balance. The data is being generated from Etherscan. So in my opinion, that's a little scary. It's like someone saying, oh, I, I know it's in your bank account, right? We all give the deposit address and it shows how much you have in it. Stay tuned and I'm gonna show you, I looked up my Ethereum address and I'll show you what happens. Google is now directly providing data about Ethereum addresses when they are searched for. So when an Ethereum address is pasted into the Google search bar, its Ethereum balance is displayed. So I had to test this, but you're going to see the next slide to see what Tim Copeland came up with his article. He says the data is being collected from Ethereum Block Explorer Etherscan. So this is the photo that was on that article by Tim Copeland. It shows Google, you just post your Ethereum address and you're using the all. So you're not clicked on video, shopping, maps, news or more. You're, you're just in the all area. And then supposedly it's gonna show blockchain address and the balance. It's as if somebody can see your bank account at all times. It's pretty slippery, scary, right? So in the next slide, you're gonna see my Ethereum address and you're gonna see what I got this morning. So I tried my Ethereum address from my crypto.com account and no balance was shown there. So there must be more to the story. So you can see that that's my address. If you want to deposit Ethereum, go for it. Just kidding. Um, but it said did not match any documents. And uh, it says your question will be shared with online publishers who may be able to answer it. When shared, it won't be associated with your Google account. So. I just wanted to put that out there so that, you know, um, be aware of what you put in your Ethereum wallet um, and uh, just know that if this is what's happening, that means as we share our deposit addresses, 
that I guess is uh, going to be showing up our balances on Google. So <laughs> very interesting. It'll be good to see if that works out. So overall market Bitcoin and Ethereum market cap. So on Coin Market Cap today, the total money in crypto land is nine hundred and twenty billion dollars. So I did multiple line thicknesses so we could look at this together to see where we were at seven days ago and where we're at today. So seven days ago, we were fluctuating as high as nine hundred and seventy five billion. And today being at nine twenty. So we have about a 50, 55 billion dollar dip. All right. But look at what happened on October 10th. You can see yesterday it almost got down. It went way below 900 billion. And I would say it was probably almost at hmm, maybe that's 890 maybe billion. So where there was a quick dip and it went right back up. So how does that make you feel? I don't know. I'd love to open you up for question and answers later, but it's exciting to see for me, this goes super, super low because I am very bullish on crypto as far as long-term, long-term. So I would say 10 years out, you can see Google merging, Coinbase merging, BlackRock getting in, and you have all of these major money management systems getting into crypto. So I don't feel like this market cap is going to stay this low very soon. Assuming that that iCloud transform the iCloud iCloud payment on Google is encompassing 9% of the alphabet soup, the alphabet's overall incoming revenue. So if you would just search for how much that 9% is and assume that a percentage of that will be paid with crypto there could be a lot of more money coming into crypto. So this could be the all-time lows for the next 50 years. And if that is true, then this could be a great acquisition period for myself. This cannot be financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor. So because I'm more long-term on crypto, I want to look at the one-month performance in market cap block size on coin 360 this is what's called the heat map for anybody that's new the dark red the darkest of the dark reds means the price went down three steps and so within that for the last month we have some really good coins and the reason why i'm super excited about this is because i am super frugal and when it comes to purchasing something the bottom price is the most important to me. Like Ray Dahlia with Bridgewater would say, you buy when there's blood in the streets. So I think that's pretty relative in this situation. Dark red is super low. So Ethereum, I thought this was amazing. It's down 27% in the last 30 days. Uh, fabulous. Bitcoin is down 11.9%. So for the people in the acquisition mode and their more long-term visionaries then you want to really zone in on this coin360.com heat map on a one month perspective and see what's darkest of the dark reds because you know you're getting it close to the floor and after we get through this slide and some q a we'll look at these and see what one is really flooring so that you can get it on super sale so anybody that's a, a parent you know you buy winter clothes in the summer because that's when they're about 70 to 90 percent off and you buy summer clothes in the winter because that's when they're 90 percent off and that saves you so much money on your budget so same concept here or you buy a house in the auction block because you can make so much more on the retail market but you're getting it wholesale so for those of you that are in take profit mode you want to zone in on the dark green because that's the price to buy it went up three steps. So that means that's the top of the market. You could sell your Ripple XRP or you could sell your Quant and Ripple's up 38%. You could see Stellar Lumens below the Cardano. ADA is Cardano below that. Stellar Lumens is a light green. 
the lightest of the green means it's one step up in price. So then you have quant in the upper right hand corner. That one is a dark green. It's up. And then below sand, you can see MKR. That's maker. That's a dark green. So if you have the quant ripple or maker in your asset class and or asset management pool, then you would want to consider looking at those to see how much of a profit you're at. Are you at a profit right now? And that may be something where you want to take profit. The dark reds is where you may want to consider acquiring some after looking at the analytics on the charts we're about to look at. So in the darkest of dark reds, we have Leo, FTT, Crow, which is crypto, Seth, Sheeb, Sand, Mana, Phantom, um, Syntex, Dot, AVAX, Near. There's a, quite a few. EOS, Zcash. Ethereum Classic, Ethereum. You can see Bitcoin is not a dark red yet. There's a lot of chitter chatter about Bitcoin going down below this. So this is a good time. Just keep keep your eyes on the ball here. We're going to use the CryptoMastery.online indicators now. So if you want to subscribe, just use the above URL, CryptoMastery.online, and then you can get the overlays which are what these are. So I'll briefly go into what this is and to get a deeper understanding of how to utilize these proprietary indicators, you would just subscribe to the crypto online, cryptomastery.online, and there's a tremendous amount of training inside the members area. So for Bitcoin, this is the one week performance chart with the crypto mastery indicators. And Currently, for this week, each bar, each candlestick on this chart represents one week. So the early reversal indicator saying that Bitcoin is going to move upward has not triggered on the one week basis. So and the average true range, that is that thick red line saying that it's still in downward momentum. So there's no indicator on a one week basis that's showing that Bitcoin is going to go up. The trend, the key came in, but the movement upward wasn't strong enough to pursue or to create a one or a two, or actually what happens with this trend indicator, the key cam comes in saying, hey, there's a key opportunity coming. Then the bell will pop up saying, all right, it's, it's a good thing. And then the one and the two and the three, the four, five, six, and the seven will come up saying that, the movement is still moving in the upward direction. When it's not moving up, the line is red, and then there's no key bell or numbers. And notice that on the trend indicator, the line below is still red. So that's still downward. Now the trend strength indicator is a third one, and that has the little downward arrows showing that it's still moving down. And I forgot to tell you about the radar. So the radar is a fourth indicator within the bundle of the crypto master indicators. What the radar is showing you is phenomenal. It's showing you four different charts all at once on the average of what direction it's going in. So 60 stands for one hour, 240 stands for four hours, the D stands for one day, and the W stands for one week. So if you were trading on a 60 minute chart and you were just that's where you started and that's where you're going to end on the 60 minute chart. The average direction it's going in right now is downward. On the four hour chart, it's going up on those averages. But the one day and the one week, Bitcoin is still going down. And then you have on the fourth section down is the signal line. So this is very easy to understand. I love these indicators. It simplifies and it does quantitative mathematical analytics for you and they just simplify it for you. So the green line means that it's going up, but you see that gold line, it's extremely tight. There's no space in between. When you have, whether it's red or green, when it's close to that gold line, it could switch directions at any time. So here's the thing, it didn't switch, it's still green. It's slowly moving sideways. So in this situation, it could go both directions, up or down. 
So at this point, you would just want to step aside from the signal line and you would want to look at other places because it's basically saying this is one of those moments where it could go up or down. It could switch directions and the upward momentum is not strong. So it, this is not the ideal market to be focusing on at this point. A lot of people say, let the game come to you. Let the market come to you. Well, it's not coming anywhere. It's not moving. <laughs> Sideways city. So the next indicator down is the volatility index. So this is also relative to the top indicator. So what I want you to see is the line in the volatility index. You see how that's red? Take your eyes and look at the top of the early reversal indicator and see the color of those candlesticks red? That is mimicking, that is connecting, and it's, it's telling you that it's in the oversold zone. So volatility index has the upper green area, which is overbought. And right now, the line is in oversold. So that means we're basically getting to the rock bottom prices and there is a number. So that thick red line on the bottom of the volatility index stands for the number 20. And the very thin red line is a zero. You can see that the volatility index for Bitcoin is 3.17. Absolutely amazing. That is when it comes to like auction block prices, this is showing you we are really, really low. So people are holding back from getting in right now. So that is what's happening. But when it switches, what is so beautiful about this moment in time with Bitcoin is that there is so much room to grow. So look at the space between the red zone on the bottom and the green zone on the top of that volatility index. That is like having a seed in the soil and it has a rooftop to grow to, like a beanstalk that'll grow 20 feet. So in my perspective, that is saying like this little seedling has an endless opportunity to grow at this point. Because when it gets to the top of that top green bar on the volatility index 100, that's danger zone. Like you don't want to be caught with holding it at that point because if you do, it's only got downward to go. So at this point in the Bitcoin world, you only have an up upward place to go. That's it. So we are so close to the floor. So when I was talking earlier about this is an acquisition stage, I truly mean it. When we get onto the Bitcoin live chart, we can look to see how often has it ever gotten on a one week basis this low? And I don't think I've seen it this slow in a long time. So with all the fundamental, which we some kind could say funny mental news out there, I want you to really take into consideration when you have Google now accepting Bitcoin as a payment. And that iCloud service represents 9% of all the income coming in to Google, then you should really take into consideration how much money does Google take in a week, a month. And if you took a percentage of that and said, if a per this XYZ percentage of Google took in this much money in Bitcoin, how much money in Bitcoin would that mean is fluctuating in the market? And so here's the other thing. If Google is going to accept Bitcoin, then the question is, are they going to take Bitcoin and, and transform it into USD or are they going to keep in Bitcoin? Because then that's going to hold the market cap for Bitcoin very, very, very much so. So and, and here's the other bit and piece about the news today is that Coinbase Commerce holds 10 cryptos. So it would be advantageous for us to find out what are those 10 cryptos that Coinbase Commerce is holding? Knowing that Bitcoin is going to be accepted by Google, but that means also on crypto, on Coinbase Commerce, what, what those other 10 coins will be able to be used most likely also to pay for those Google iCloud services. All right. So those could be 10 cryptos that you want to focus on right now, have them in your portfolio while we're in such a down market. So now we're going to go look at Ethereum. 
So here's Ethereum USD one week performance chart with crypto mastery indicators. I'm going to just go straight down to the volatility index on the bottom. So we just went over that with Bitcoin. Bitcoin was a three volatility. Ethereum is not that low. Ethereum is at 10.43. So you can see why I'm so excited about Bitcoin. All right, Bitcoin is still the largest market cap, and then you have Ethereum, the second largest largest market cap of all crypto land. But Ethereum is not as low on the oversold as Bitcoin. Okay, but Ethereum is one of those top ten, one of those ten coins that Coinbase Commerce will accept. So that is good. So both of these two could be used to pay for iCloud services. Now, let's go up from the bottom up on this one. So the signal line is tight. You see how the signal line was saying, okay, we have upward momentum, and now it's pretty much gone sideways, and those, the gold line and the green line are tight. It could easily flip the switch and go down, or it could go up. So we just have to wait and see. But above the signal line, you have the trend strength, and that is indicating downward. This is again a one week performance chart. So each one of these indicators on that trend strength represents one week. And let's go to the trend. That one, the underlining line is red. So it's going down. You could see that the momentum and the movement, very low candlesticks, very low. Sideways city again. And you have that radar. Looks like it's moving up for the one hour and the four hour, but it's been down for the one day average and the one week average. So I like what I see for the one, one hour and the four hour. So we'll jump into that live chart. As far as the early reversal indicator, it, it has not triggered an upward early reversal arrow and the average tree range is still on the downward. So we are in pause mode on Ethereum unless you're shorting the market. But even if you were shorting the market, this isn't going to be going much. It's not really moving. And the other thing I want to indicate to you guys, which is huge, my favorite part of these indicators is this Keltner band up top on the early reversal and average true range indicator combo. Those three lines are amazing. Right now, Ethereum is, if we'd have to go on the live chart and look at it, but it's below the lowest of the, Kautner band, which is more of an average and the typical place where the it's literally a, either a ceiling or it's going to be a floor. So just like I told you earlier on Bitcoin, you have only one direction to go is up. So at this point, I think the world is just waiting for these things to hit the bottom. Hit the blood in the streets section, as Ray Daly would say. And the beautiful part about this chart. And remember, it's a one week chart, so it's more of a longer term perspective. It's upward is like the only way to go at this point. So once we hit the floor and we find the floor. So with that being said, you have a huge amount of space to grow in. So even though like right now it's not happening, there is something brewing in the back. It's kind of like planting your seeds in the spring and letting them sprout inside and then waiting for the weather to be right after the, you know, when the, the last frost is over, then you put them in the garden and then you just let it grow. So there's patience. And remember, it takes, you know, a whole season to grow a pumpkin or a potato. So just let it just be patient. OK, and it's going to pay off. So in the crypto mastery basket, we have the Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. Most of these can be found on Coinbase. So we're going to look at the hot movers that are in the basket. What you're looking at right now, and this is essential that you see this, the 30-minute trading view crypto screener. This is not our financial advice, so I don't trade specifically just on what trading you says but 30 minutes so if you're if you're buying on a 30 minute i mean you should be selling on a 30 minute all right so it's just like if it's this is one of these moments where this is for swing traders that are getting active and they're buying and selling now if you're 
buying or selling on a shorter time frame, the expectations of the percentage of change needs to be really low. So I want you to have correct expectations. Notice the percentage changed, 0.29. So the only thing this really works good on typically is larger sums of money where you're in and you're out. So you sit down, you get in and you get out in 30 minutes because it changes very fast. All right. But what comes up comes down and you need to be very in sync with your indicators. So if you're wanting to do this, I would highly recommend doing paper trading within TradingView so that there's no inter there's no mishap on your real money you need to practice and get in sync like you're playing the piano and, and you you've got to read the music so you got to get in sync so you're making harmonious movements and you're becoming very accurate and i'd rather you fail on your paper trader than with your real money and then succeed continuously with your paper trader and once you get in sync then use your real money all right well i can't tell you to do anything because i'm not a financial advisor but Paper trading is the way to go as you start, and especially because you may want to be more risky. So if you are risk a tendency, then risk it up all you want with your paper trader. All right, so we have Solana. At the time of publishing this and creating this, it went up 0.41%, and the indicator for the technical rating is saying buy. Algo up 0.37, Link was up 0.37, Cardano up 0.33, Phantom up 0.29, Polygon was up 0.26, Ethereum 0.26, Bitcoin up 0.22, uh, Harmony, which is one, is 0.16, and Cosmos was up 0.03. All right, so now we're gonna look at the crypto screener. So TradingView crypto screener with the Coinbase filtration system on, this is a 30 minute technical rating, and it's also filtered by coins with more than $300 million in a market cap. Wanted to simplify a little bit. So with that, we had, I'll just talk about maybe top three. We had Maker, Chain, and I'll say Litecoin were all in buy. And if you guys have questions about the crypto screener, let me know and I can jump in on that. And what I did is I literally deleted all the other sections and columns on the crypto screener to just look at the exchange and the technical rating. Because when I'm doing this, I'm gonna now just split my screen in half and I'm gonna click on one of these coins and I'm gonna analyze it deeper with my charts. So this is not financial advice for educational purposes only. And it's very important to know that you need to use your proprietary indicators to have a better perspective, let the quantitative, analytical, mathematical calculations just be your guide so that you can use this to zone in on some things, but then let the charts actually guide you to where you need to be if you're buying, selling, or holding. Okay, so we're gonna review the indicators live, and we're gonna, if you want to subscribe to them, you can go to cryptomastery.online. So now it's time to meet Joe and do some question and answers. And we will go to the Litecoin. So, no. oops, sorry guys. Oh no. I just got to get the control panel up. All right. So, and if you want to get unmuted, let me know so that we can talk live. We've got some great people in the audience. So, let me know if you guys want. Um, if you're open to get unmuted, it is being put on YouTube, so it will be um, displayed on there for you guys to see at a later time. All right, so Joe, I wanted to just introduce you to everybody, um, and let's start looking at the market. Awesome. Hi, Susie. Hi, everyone. Hi. Okay. You know, I try to uh, make the most of the time we have and try to find the best setups. And today was one of them days where, you know, the market's in a consolidation period. So a lot of the coins on the Coinbase are are kind of in between this consolidation. So before we go on the Coinbase, um, 
I wanted to go talk because I know we have different uh, customers and users that are also at KeyCoin, Susie. And okay. there was one coin in there in particular that I thought that this right here is probably like in the midst of everything going on, maybe a diamond in the jet, you know, a diamond in the jungle. And this is the uh, people USDT. Yeah. Right. And if you put the put that on the daily. Okay, and if you uh, sprint the chart up a little bit more, all right. And what I just wanted to point out yeah. is, is that this is along the theme of what we've been doing over the last um, 30 days, whereas that we're looking for ERI print um, as well as uh, a fresh green dot on the TSI. And and that's really, you know, the advantage of having an education and having the tools, you know, because sometimes, you know, you can't force to trade. You have to let the market come to you. Um, but with the right tools, you know, you can have uh, different accounts with different exchanges and you'll find opportunity or at least know if there's danger. You know? And um, if there's no... Um, uh, Opportunity, you have to wait sometimes, and sometimes uh, the best trade is having an account at another exchange. <laughs> so, what's really cool about this, Susie, is, is that you know we have a couple things that we're waiting for as well. Um, we, you know, meaning is that we're waiting for the trend indicator uh, for the new uh, key print. Or the new bell print, rather. And the radar is all green, which is, you know, we like green. And, you know, the best thing about this trading view is once you mark the chart up, you know, everything is saved. And then now you have all your notes on there. So for um, anyone that's new that's following along, I know that there's a bunch of new people in here. Um, you can write right on the chart, just like what Susie's doing, uh, what you're waiting for, because these are um, consistent rules of what we use to navigate through this jungle to find a diamond in the mist. And then we're also waiting on the um, signal line. Yeah, absolutely. So what we'll now, do is, guys, we here we'll add an alert for the signal. So you like to do yours for just crossing, is that right, Joe? Yeah, well, we have, uh, there was a holiday in here. Uh, when we come into next week, we're going to start with the alert. You know, um, there's an update that I'm going to put through uh, to everyone that renewed. Uh, and, um, I'll, you know, with a couple other things in there of how we can uh, maximize um, the tools and manage the information because you know successful trading is managing the information it's, that's all you're doing is you have to manage manage the information and you can't do it in your head you need to have the analytical tools to manage it it's just like using a GPS in your car to find your destination and that one there you choose the bell alert Perfect.
So what I'm doing, guys, is I'm actually putting my notes in the alert name and I'm copying and pasting them in the message because you're going to get a, a text or an email message and it's just going to say trading view alert. Unless whatever you put in this message, you'll actually see it. So I think make certain that you write it in a way that's going to make absolute sense to you so you know what to do next and make sure you put it in that and then your alert will be right here that you created oh wow okay there's a lot of alerts here but then also i want to show you when it expires click reset so you just click on these and after they triggered and you made your move then you can replay them so that i've got way too many alerts to, to go there <laughs> but we could uh just make certain that you once it goes off that you go back and you replay it all right let's see if there's any questions so far no questions okay yeah you know Susie, so, just a couple of things that I, I wanted to point out on this before we go um if any further if you make the chart a little bit more tighter right and uh, just a little bit more keep going keep going right stop uh, yeah. right I, what i yeah I, I just wanted to just point out the atr where is that like Back in May uh, of twenty second, May twenty second of this year, that was when we were uh, in a cycle up with the ATR, and that cycle lasted how many days? Eighty eight days. So that's about three months, right? And now we've been in a down cycle. And how long? How many days are we into this cycle right now, Susie? Uh, let's say. Fifty-five. 55 yeah, days. I, 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 yeah, and the reason why I just point that out because it's like you know, yeah, as, as a quantitative engineer, you know, we look at cycles, and these tools are designed to show changes of the market cycle. Here's a good example here, where it is that in another uh, thirty days or another month, we're going to be coming up to the same about timeline, which is about. 88 or 80 to 90 days whereas is that we could see the potential swing in in this market so in this case point with this particular opportunity this may be more than what you bought more than what you bargained for that's what i would describe it meaning is that if this market breaks the atr well then this market may um start to trend up higher on this new cycle and it may do a new high that means taking out the high up there in August. So this one here has an opportunity of maybe going a hundred percent because we're trading right now at about 21. Um, let's say like it would have a, a target destination at about 42, 43 on the upside. And, and that's what the, the, the Fibonacci levels are good for. And that's, that's something else we're going to, start to get into like a target you know but um this one here um you definitely can set your alerts for the atr and anyone who's um positioned in this if it does break that atr this could be a, a super trend and, and i consider a super trend any trend that's trending with the atr whereas that you may get a movement to a higher high and this may be one of them big winners you know it, it's already a, a winner in the making I mean, we got the radar all green, and and we have the ERI set up with the TSI today. And it was like the only one um, that was exactly like you're seeing it, too. Like I was already like, I, I was going here and, and trying to find the best in here, you know. But it, like, I, I like to track my days by day numbers. So we're at the 284th day of 2022 so if we add 30 days to that if you get to day 314 of 2022 then that's where the the lasting that the time frame of this last cycle was so we would want to check back on day 314 to see where we are with people yeah so, so um now i have another good one that i want to show 
Okay. And it's not as good as that. <laughs> okay. Let, let's say next best thing um, is APL BTC. Oh, it, you know what? Let me unfilter this. Um, yeah, there we go. It, was it on Qcoin that you were thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, what's significant on this one, right? Is is that today it broke the ATR? You know. Now, before we get to the ATR, because that's today, let's talk about how we got there to this point. Because the ATR is actually the last uh, confirmation that the market has moved, and the ATR um, confirms the next possible super trend. And super trend meaning is that we can stay uh, trending in a consistent area, a consistent direction for longer than 30 days. So um, uh, uh, what makes this trade, uh, I, why I like this trade is, is that if you take a look, Susie, back in here in October, in the beginning of the month, right, the setup is all along what we've been showing you here the last 30 to 60 days, especially the last four weeks, because all you've been talking about is trade setups, trade setups, trade setups. Because while this market is in a bear market, when you do get these trade setups, they are consistent. You just have to trade the range. Now, this setup here, Susie, um, if you make it just a little bit tighter, I just wanted to just show the depth right there. Show the depth in the chart where is that the volatility index in the beginning of October was down there at the 20. And anytime when you have the, the volatility index down at the 20, we're always looking for uh, the TSI to see if the TSI is green or if it's red. I'm just going to put a little line here so we can track it. So here's where we were at below 20. We're at 9.93. Guys, remember, Bitcoin is at 3.14 right now. Even this guy, this one, did not even get down that low. There right. we go. That's where so, we were at before. Yeah, and once we get that volatility index gets down at the 20, right, we're looking for the TSI. And that's why you, you need to have your alert set for that TSI. Because sometimes you'll get an ERI with the TSI. You know, that means the early reversal confirms the TSI like we just went over. Or you may get the volatility index confirms the TSI, right? Sometimes we get these mathematical confirmations. So we got the confirmation in there from our trade setup. Next, we were able to get the signal line. Okay, so even before we got to the actual trend indicator, which is the bell alert, we already had a winning position into this market. Now, yeah, but can I make a point there, Joe? Look mm -hmm. at this. Before this. Before the trend triggered, notice that it's you can see the candlesticks are below the red line. Can you explain to them like what the red line is representing so they understand the significance of when you see a candlestick below that, how that could be a positive? Yeah, well, basically what's that showing is, is that there's, you know, the condition of the market, there's no momentum. And when there's no momentum, if you notice, there's no color on the bars. So, like, not only is are we looking at um, the trend showing red, meaning is that, you know, there's no momentum. But in addition to that, we're seeing in there with the color that everything is turned off. And um, what you, what's unique about this is, is that when we do get our bell alert, you can see in here today, was the actual number three. So this is, in my opinion, something that's in the making because, um, Susie, if you go back to the other uh, chart, all right, I just wanted to say that we're getting the three print along with that break in the ATR, and we may get a move to take out that high that we had in September. So, Susie, if you put a, a right there, oh. and, and you take a look at the high right there, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get to. Perfect. 
that one right there looks like the high. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that thing that thing can go. Now, unless you get your Start. your TSI to turn red, just go with it. And right now, you know, it, today's the first day it broke that. Um, you know, you never you're never gonna know if it's if the market's gonna follow through. But this is one of them cases that if it follows through, well then, you know, we'll be looking for it to put a new high in. If it does, it'll be at 21% into, you know, depending on how long it takes to get up there. But if it does hit that, mm -hmm. then it's way beyond the top Keltner band. So that high was right here. It's a little difficult when you're dealing with Bitcoin just because the conversion rates, you really have to like count so many zeros. So I would just say if any of you guys are stressed out, just just take a deep breath and literally you're going to have to write it down on a piece of paper so that you understand like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And when I'm working with using Bitcoin as a currency, it just usually say, say 533 and 639. I focus on anything beyond the zeros, but it is important just to, to know that there's this many digits past the point, the, the decimal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So just be very, take it slow and, and you'll grasp it. Um, but it, it's much easier to trade with a stable coin that is based on the dollar just because we're so used to working with just three digits or four digits or five with a decimal point and so forth. I mean, Jay, Jay, does it make you a little um, nervous working with numbers that are 10 digits long versus three digits or four digits? <laughs> well, um, you know, the, the numbers can be a little bit uh, overwhelming, you know, um, but um, it's... Uh, you know, you really have to just um, go where, where the opportunity is, you know. Um, but, yeah, sometimes that when you do get to um, doing these different cross pairs and you look at the decimal uh, values, you just have to be able to understand that, you know, you, you're going to be dealing with uh, a different type of scaling. So so just to, don't let it intimidate you or overwhelm you. Just understand that it's a different scaling uh, for each coin, uh, you know, depending on how that matrix is is calculated, you know, so it's just another room with different wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that makes sense. Just be patient with yourself, and and also, you guys take the ruler, and you you could go from one place, one spot on the chart to the other to figure out what percentage it is, so that way you know what you're actually making if it's just the additional math is a little too much for you to convert from bitcoin to usd and then there's also bitcoin calculators to help you with that all right so what else do you have under your belt today joe <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right well uh you i have got apollo bitcoin <laughs> Okay, so I have um, uh, one more, and then that'll be it. Okay, and then uh, well, actually, there's just two more. One more on this key coin, and then I only have one for the Coinbase. Which um, um, let's just go. Let's go to this one, which is the CUSD BTC coin. Yeah, key coin. I guess it's Cello. Keep going. Yeah. So on this one here, um, what's significant about this is, is, is that uh, a couple of days ago we got the ERI print, right? And Susie, if you put a vertical line right on that ERI, oh, right here, yeah, it's perfect yeah. timing with everything yeah. else. So. Yeah, and I just want to point out that follows in suit with what we've been going over. So the thing is, is that one thing you'll notice in here, following along in here, is the consistency 
of what we've been kind of reviewing in here, um, which is really important because, you know, um, that you take the time that we're spending here and try to get the most out of um, the the product and the most out of the experience of working with us in here. And uh, this is another setup, um, which is uh, where you have the ERI and the TSI that confirmed. And at that point, like that may be the beginning of the trend, and then you may be waiting for it. So in this case point, today we were able to get the signal line that confirmed, and that's with the cross. And then now we're we're waiting for one thing, which is the trend indicator. So when the trend actually unfolds itself, each trend is different when it unfolds, each chart is different. The only thing that we can do is just have these different tools and allow these tools to show us these clues. And then as these clues show themselves, for us to become the master uh, at the clue, at the game of clue, you know, and being able to spot these clues and then being able to utilize this information to our advantage. Like information is great, but you have to utilize it. So um, ideally here is, is that you see, you see and learn the consistency of the rules and from this experience working with us, now at, at some point, you know, in the paper trader, you're able to experience the program and experience the success from following the consistency of the rules. So in this case point, this market is on the run. Um, we're going to be waiting for that trend indicator to turn on. And um, we want to stay with this. Um, and up until the point that TSI goes red. And right now, there's plenty of room on that TSI where it can work its way up to the blue. Uh, so we just want to make sure that this one here, we uh, keep an eye on this. So I'm just setting an alert for what you said, up until the mark where the TSI goes red. So I'm, I'm doing an alert to tell me when Cello is going down. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell myself, I don't know if you guys are like me, but you have a lot of different things, a lot of different coins on multiple exchanges. So it's important for me to tell myself what exchange this is on just so that I can act fast. Okay, so we've got our alarm, our alert set for TSI going down. We have room for this to grow if we just, well, I'm trying to just open that indicator. So this is over bought zone, and so we still have room to grow up to the top of that. In the past, it looks like it's kind of ceiling at 95, 92, 96. This one ceiling to 87 and that one at 98. And then these had different zones. But the great thing is, is look, we've surpassed the momentum on these areas. So let's see, let's see where we go. On the average true range, it's still in the entry zone. This is amazing, Joe. Look, you had entry here and entry here. A little bit of exit there it was a short downward spiral for the one day charts. But we are we are hitting the top here. But notice, guys, the candlestick is black, and so that means it's, it's reflecting the volatility index. See, it's it's what we call it the cake bake zone. Seal volatility is not in oversold, but it's not overbought. It's in the let the cake bake. So therefore, you have those black candlesticks. Red is my ideal place to buy, and then green is my, the green means stop to me. <laughs> so the good thing is, is, is you're not in the oversold zone. So even if you were just primarily focusing on the early reversal and average true range, you know, when you get into the green candlestick zone, that's when you may think, hmm, 
maybe time to take some profit or scale out a little bit or if you've invested and whatever you've made sometimes people just like to invest once they make the initial investment out then they'll take that out and leave the earnings in and then they uh, move on to another asset so they have what do they what do they call those uh like dust stardust or something they basically leave their earnings in and they move on with their seed money all right what was the other one joe before before we hit the one hour uh, okay um well this one here would be back on coinbase and um and I was just checking on there because there's not that much um, data on there, but um, there was an ERI. Like if you go in there to uh, Dex Tools, D E X T U S D. Do you want to? Okay, you wanted to use uh, the USD. Okay. Right. Nice. And if, and like what I wanted to point out here. Is that we we got the ERI today, right? But what we could be waiting for? So, like, we don't have a lot of data on this, right? But we do have the first initial um, conditions of the setup. So here's a case point where you can set your alerts, and um, maybe we check back with this next week, and maybe we can find one of these coins. That we can, um, I like I can, you know, uh, record the progression, Susie. You know, because like yeah. here's the case where is is that we don't have a bunch of things yet, and and I and I want to try to make things interesting of what we're waiting for. So right now what we do have is the volatility index, which is the first clue, right, and. Uh, and we do have the signal line. But what we don't have, right, and this is what's most important, we don't have that TSI yet. And we don't have that trend indicator. So sometimes what will happen is, is, is that, you know, we may get that signal line, which is a different calculation on the math, and it can show a buy. And the market just may go sideways. And then it's not until these other chart overlays turn on and give the confirmation does the market actually make its initial move. And that's why it's important to have, you know, um, each one of these. Because, you know, this is what, you know, I found in here um, through experience and, and working with um, customers and people and helping uh, different people from all over the world. Like these tools, you know, we made adjustments to your feedback of what's easy, what's not easy, and try to simplify things in a way, whereas um, we can have the most accurate information, but at the same time, uh, have it very transparent and clean. So um, the success is in the simplicity. Nice. And that's what I'm thinking is that if, if we get a TSI print tomorrow, like a green dot on this, well, then we may see this start to drift up higher to the upper end of the, the culture band. So this is something in here. Um, um, you know, one of the ones that I found that was set up. The other coins in here for, for today, it looks like everything is consolidating and um, we just have to let things develop. Maybe next week we'll have something. I'll be able to show some a lot more other uh, products on Coinbase, which are developing. So this one it doesn't have a, a lot of data, but um, it right now it it does have enough. Yeah, it does have enough wow. in there to do the calculations. Well, let's like see how much on sale it is. It went down sixty two percent in the last hundred and ten days. So the it is currently at ten cents and it was high as twenty nine cents. So you know, I, 
having that fundamental news about Google accepting Bitcoin 9%, I'm really eager to look in to see the total total revenue or what Google actually brings in for their iCloud services. And if if that's 9% of all of Alphabet's income, then you know what percentage of that do you think will get paid in Bitcoin in the future? So to me, I feel like that will bring some solidity to crypto. And then when it comes to the overall market, you're going to have a lot of more eyes in the industry. If you would call it an industry, I call it crypto land. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I call it crypto land. And guys, this was just June, June of 22. So June 23rd of 22 is when it was at that. So in the long term span of things, you know, that's 110 days. So that's less than, you know, 33, three, three, four months. You know, it made a move, but, you know, what comes down goes up. So maybe like three or four months away from some um, high. And that article about Google accepting Bitcoin said as early as 2023. So I have a feeling in 2023, a lot of things are going to change in crypto. And I feel like that that low market cap we're at right now, things will change. But I would yeah. understand that people could be holding back on investing in Bitcoin at the moment to get it to drop so that they can jump in and get Bitcoin at the lowest possible prices. And I wouldn't be surprised if some people are slowly etching in with large sums of money, but they're doing it so slow so that it's not, shaking the market because their intent is to accumulate a lot of bitcoin this is assumption yeah. but hey you know i just while you were talking right if you put this symbol in right um uh, l t c e t h and this is at gemini right this one here we got the radar all green and this is all like this is a pair, Litecoin versus Ethereum. So, like I was just going through to see if I find the radar green for us before we go. So yeah, I, I was able to find an all green radar right on this Litecoin Ethereum, but it looks like it may be towards the end of this road, you know. But there still is room, like if you look at the TSI Susie, for it to go. And if you notice, the signal line didn't cross yet. So. um this might be something in here, whereas is that we may see this market do a new high um, and see that signal line show. So we can be waiting for uh, 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 across of the signal line, waiting for the signal line, and we're waiting for the trend alert. And what we may see is we may we may see this part of the pair get stronger coming in so I'm always checking because like there's so many coins on there Susie that I gotta go through there and you know I, I'm not the brightest bulb on the on the lamp I mean <laughs> I go over that coin base a couple of different are... times <laughs> well I guess you could say you know you know, you use these tools so that you don't have to be completely the brightest ball because you just let the the tools be the bulb, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, I went through there, and I didn't see, I didn't find it earlier. But you know, I always uh, take the time in there, um, um, you know, just to try to so that we can show. Uh, the best of the technology and, and the best opportunity with the time that you're spending here with us. And, and be fair by showing the different exchanges as well. So we're waiting on the trend. Whoops, I'm trying to just get yeah. my trend key. And then after that, you want your your number one to trigger. The good thing is, is the the line Typically, green is up, and the red is down, and so the line has changed. But you have um, the dojo, doji there. All right, so this is what's going on with the trend. We're waiting for the bell and the key to come in. 
again. And let's look at this. Look at that. It hit exactly the top counter band on the one day. So. Wow. Yeah. So here's the thing. I mean, it's just. It's going to have to break through this. But once it, the candlesticks go. So right here, guys, just quick test for you. What does the black mean? The black means in the let the cake bake zone down here in the volatility index you can see it did go up in the oversold zone but it's tinkering so as far as room to grow it just has from here to there to grow so it's not a lot of growing space remember down here i'm just going to put a line down here it's a good example of at this point actually i'm going to do a cross line all right because i want you to see the significance and the value of getting it with the volatility in the red zone. So the volatility here was a 1.93. So let's see how much, oh, it didn't go through the whole chart, but okay, so he, one second. So let me get this. Oh, all right. Well, I guess I'll have to take it up here. So let's do a cross line here to see where that was. Looks like it was as low as this. So from that point where that volatility index was super low to where it is now, let's kind of see where that is. So you take your ruler and you go, oh, when it does that, I can't, okay, perfect, to where it is now. Okay, so in 60 days, it went up 28% from that ultimate low. So I know sometimes it's hard to like listen to someone and be like, I believe it, I understand it, but I just want you to see it. I want you to see when we see something at such a low volatility index, that number is just not made up out of anywhere. It's a huge, significant red line and it has a very important significance that it's super low. So this is a great example to say, look, not that we say go, you can't tell you anything to do, but some people slowly get into the market. They just say, oh, well, I'll put a little bit here when it's on the red line. Even though nothing at that point was saying, hey, it's time to buy. Don't like get in. No, there was nothing other than it was in the red zone. All right. And then for those who, who just don't like to swing trade and they're just like to acquire, if you're just in an acquisition age right now and you're just saying, OK, well, I've got 20 years to sit in the market and you want to do something that's going to just give you major returns in the future. And assuming that you're looking at something with very strong fundamentals, more of like a utility, a very important technology, a large market cap where you know that this is going to be like a stable Mabel type of coin, then that that is something that I'm looking at. And um, I wanted you to have that analytical perspective to potentially go back in some of these charts when you're considering purchasing something and acquiring it for a long term try to find something with that volatility index is low but make certain that it is something with a high large market cap maybe in the top 10 market cap coins so that you have time on your side and you have a team that is dependable um, but i wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket so that's probably another story for another day. I know we're out of time. So um, it's great having you guys here. There's no questions today, Joe. So they must have just been listening to you. They're in download data mode. <laughs> Anything yeah, else I mean, you look, have up here in your little magic hat there, Joe? This is a great find. Uh, yeah, I, look, I, that was well, well said, Susie. I, I agree with everything that you said. And... Um, it's a perfect way to to close this week out. That's a good um, good explanation. Yeah, because even if the other indicators aren't showing, guys, if you just focus solely on that volatility index, and um, I really feel like this time next year in 2023, when we're doing this analysis and we're looking at Bitcoin, after that Google news today, I, I feel like Bitcoin is going to be at such a higher level such a higher level and volatility index. And someone's going to go, oh, why didn't I listen to Crypto Girl? <laughs> why didn't I just acquire a few dollars, $20 here, $20 there, you know? Oh, no. Down cost averaging. So.
I can't tell you what to buy and I'm not telling you what to buy. I'm just saying, please look at your volatility indexes and if you have a good coin, if you have a good fundamental, a good utility, if an infrastructure, then go there. All right. So you guys are awesome. Thanks for listening. You can be able to see this on YouTube live in a few hours. Thanks to our, our awesome Irene on the team. And uh, thanks for coming. You want to say anything, Joe, before we jump off? Uh, thank you for... Um you know, attending and uh, have a great week trading.